Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be 10 things no one told me about newborns. These are kind of like the things that a friend would tell you, or maybe you would call up a friend and be like, this is happening, or she or he did this, and I'm very confused and you're worried about. We're gonna discuss the top 10 things that I have experienced over the last two and a half months. And then I started realizing, oh, I'm not alone in this. A lot of people experience it. This is just things that nobody told me about. We're gonna start off with a banger, the one that surprised me the most. It actually shocked me, and that is how noisy newborns actually are when they're sleeping. There's something called active sleep, which is essentially the newborn is grunting, potentially crying, wiggling, squirming, but is actually asleep. And I was also very shocked by the amount that a newborn grunts in particular. So I would wake up in the middle of the night, look at baby grunting, cause I'd be worried that something's going on. And I'd look at her and she'd be totally asleep. And I had no idea that this was a thing. I always just thought newborns wake you up from crying. To be completely honest with you, my newborn doesn't cry as much as she does grunt. She is a grunter. I started realizing that she was grunting, but she was awake throughout the evening. So some of the time she was in active sleep and then sometimes she would grunt and wake herself up. And it kind of looked like she was trying to have a bowel movement and was actually having a hard time doing so and was just gassy. And I talked to our nurse at one of her visits about this and she asked me, because I'm breastfeeding, she said, is there something in your diet that's consistent every single night? And I started thinking about it. And I'm like, I have something different for dinner all the time. But then I realized, oh, I'm having chocolate. A little bit of chocolate every night is like my treat after dinner and that's the consistent thing. And she actually told me that chocolate can cause a lot of gassiness in newborns. So I have removed that from my diet and I will tell you the last couple of nights, this baby has slept eight hours. <laughs> and I'm not saying that it's just the chocolate, but I am saying she's a lot less gassy. And this one's a little bit more about mom than it is about the actual physical newborn. But I think it's really important to note. And it was really important for me to learn because it's something that gave me a lot of anxiety right off the bat when baby came out. And that was that if your milk does not start coming right away, that's pretty normal, especially if you are a first time mom. I got really worried when I was at the hospital because they told me that Eliana had lost weight, which I found out later is very common within the first week of a newborn's life. A lot of the time they drop a little bit in weight. This is what I found out later from a nurse. But the day that I gave birth, we saw Eliana's weight decrease and I didn't have full breasts that day after birth. And so I was concerned. I said, oh, I'm, I don't feel like my boobs are enlarged and filled with milk. And newborns only need colostrum, which is this sort of yellow liquid gold that comes out and it has so much nutrients, but baby does not need a lot of milk right off the bat. So your body is only going to create colostrum at the very beginning. Now this differentiates between mom to mom, right? Some moms might have full milk right away, but the more that I talk to other people post birth, the more I realize, oh wow, this is really common that milk is not in fully for like three, four, five days post birth. And then you start feeling that your boobs are a little bit harder, more filled with milk and you can start breastfeeding. And that's if you are breastfeeding. I feel like we put a lot of time and energy and dedication into researching about pregnancy, about postpartum, about what newborns need. But for me personally, I didn't put enough energy into learning more about breastfeeding. So when it came to that, that whole journey, there was a lot I didn't know. Luckily, I had tons of wonderful support around me and I got all of the questions answered. I had the nurses in the hospital help me hand express colostrum and then we saw baby's weight gain right away after that. My baby lost a little bit more weight than usual at the beginning and I think that that's what concerned them because I was hooked up to a lot of liquid 
during birth and so baby was getting a lot of that liquid too so my midwife ended up realizing that that weight drop for baby was because we were removed from the liquid so we both deflated a lot and had nothing to do with the amount of milk that was coming out of my boobs the next thing that nobody told me about newborns was the startle reflex that they all do they do this thing where they go and Alex and I started making it a joke where we would just look at each other and go she's doing it a lot less now that she's going on about three months but she still does it here and there in her first weeks of life it was constant just she would be laying there if she heard a sound she'd go or if you'd like go close to give her a kiss and she'd be kind of asleep she'd go and it's this startle reflex that I don't know if it helped them back in the day when we were living in caves and maybe there were like animals that would come up to them and it would scare the animal away or something like that. It's a reflex that they just do this all the time. And it's really cute, but also very weird <laughs> to see if you didn't know that that was a thing. And the first time that we saw it, we were like, what? Just letting you know that if your newborn's going like this in their first weeks of life, that's totally normal. Peeling skin is very common for newborns. This is something I had no idea about and I was really worried. I started noticing Eliana having peeling feet, hands, she peeled on her forehead, her eyebrows. She's actually still kind of peeling right now. It's almost completely healed, but she had a lot of peeling. And I know that some newborns have a lot of baby acne. Eliana never got baby acne, or hasn't yet, but she had a lot of peeling. So skin issues are really common in newborns because they have such sensitive skin. I did end up reading about the peeling, especially in the early weeks, that if their bath water is a little bit too hot or if you keep them in the bath water for too long, that can cause peeling. So I scaled that back in the early weeks. Now it doesn't really affect her skin because it's getting hardier, but especially in those first weeks, even the first month and stuff, you may want to reduce the heat and make sure that it's even cooler than what they recommend because I read that that can affect it. But in general, even without that, it's really normal for newborns skin to peel and it's also really normal from what I understand for them to have a lot of like baby acne and stuff like that and there's really nothing you can do about the peeling or the acne you just kind of have to wait it out we put some lotion on but the skin is going to do its thing and it's going to do what it needs to do so doing things like trying to make it better by like scrubbing the peeling skin or pulling on the peeling skin is not going to help anything so we just kind of let it be let it do its thing and it definitely has healed over time. Next, let's talk about diapers because they tell you that you're gonna be changing diapers a lot when you have a baby, and, and that's true. I was somewhat prepared for that to be a thing, but however many diapers you think you need, you need more. We went to the Costco in Auckland and we got a ginormous box of newborn diapers, and we were like, we're sorted, we're, we're super sorted. No, we ended up getting new diapers within weeks because we are changing diapers constantly. They poop and then they poop again. You change a diaper, you walk away, and they poop again. They poop while you're changing the diaper. It is constant. Get the diapers that you need and just know they're not gonna be enough. Get more. <laughs> You'll need more than you think. This next thing is something I did not know about and I had to do my own research to understand, so hopefully this will be helpful to any of you mamas that have a baby who has a little red patch on their forehead or on the side of their forehead, on the back of their neck, sometimes on their eyelid. It really just depends. They're called stork bite or angel kiss. And they are a red sort of birthmark that ends up disappearing at around a year or 18 months or something else that I've heard that they just go completely away but they're really common and they're all really similar so Eliana has a light patch of red on the back of her neck 
little tiny, tiny, tiny bit on her eyelid that you can barely see. And she has a red mark kind of right here above her eyebrow that you don't really notice when you're looking at her, but if she turns to the side, you can see it. And a good friend of mine said that her daughter had pretty much the same thing, but hers was right here on her forehead. You see actually a lot of babies with this, and I always wondered what it was. I thought that maybe it was from like clamps at birth. I had no idea, but it's actually just something that happens and they kind of romanticize it and say that it's an angel kiss that when baby was coming down, all the angels in your life, like grandparents and stuff like that, give them a really intense kiss and that's why they end up having those little red marks so that's a really beautiful way of looking at it but they are marks that most of the time more times than not they end up going away as baby grows up this next one scared me so bad it actually just happened a couple of days ago and i did some research I did the research ahead of time and went through the stress and anxiety for you guys and then realized it's really common and very normal and that is that the soft spot on their head because all newborns have this soft spot that you'll feel you'll feel that their heads have all sorts of just like different like lumps and soft spots and all different things because their brains are growing and the soft spot can pulse so we were laying in bed and all of a sudden i see this soft spot pulsing like a heartbeat and I was like, oh my gosh, why is her soft spot pulsing? Looked it up. It's very common. It's very normal. It's just blood flowing through the brain, which is a good thing. That's what we want to see. But it can be really shocking if you don't know that it's normal. So just so you know, if you see that, don't stress. This next one was one that concerned my husband and he asked the midwife and the nurse about it at the beginning because he was worried. I didn't worry too much about this one because I figured it was pretty normal and that was that their eyes kind of can cross and they can go different directions because they're learning how to use their eyes. They haven't developed the focus that we have as adults where we can really like use our eyes very easily and we can focus on the things that we need to focus. Remember, newborns are brand new to this world. So they're experiencing so many new things. They're sticking out their tongues all the time, learning about their tongues. They're wiggling their fingers and putting their pinkies up and they're learning how to use their thumbs and they're gonna move their mouth around a lot and they're going to move their eyes around and sometimes their eyes are gonna cross and it's totally normal. Your baby doesn't have an issue with his or her eyes <laughs> if they're crossing them at the beginning like that. It's very normal and after a while, it takes some time, but they start developing a little bit more of the ability to use their eyes in the appropriate way. But I mean, it's gonna take some time. Like all of these, it's just a developmental thing and as they get older, they'll get better at using their eyes. Next, let's talk about newborn nails. First off, newborns can be born with claws. <laughs> That's a bit dramatic, but they can come out with some very long nails and they grow so fast. So we bought this Haka and I know Frida sells it as well, which is a nail file. It's an electric nail file and it has worked so well for Eliana. We used it on day two because her nails were pretty long and as she grows older she starts using her fingers a little bit more especially at the beginning she scratched herself a little bit and so we made sure to file them down newborns like to like grab at their face because they're like learning how to use their reflexes and just like that startle reflex that i told you about they'll just like claw themselves and so she definitely gave herself a couple cuts on her face from her long nails. So we filed them down with the nail file instead of cutting them because that's scary to go towards your little newborn finger nubs with like something that can cut them. I don't know. The nail file is way easier and doesn't stress me out. So it's great and it's electric and it's really soft. They have like a baby, they have a newborn option and then it increases as they get older. We've been using it consistently with Eliana because her nails grow so unbelievably fast. And now that she's using her fingers a little bit more when we're breastfeeding, she will 
put her nails into my nipple like this. <laughs> and so right when she starts doing that, I'm like, all right, pull out that little baby nail file. We're gonna nail these little things down. And of course you wanna be careful. You don't wanna do them too much. You just need a little bit and it makes a big difference. And lastly, number 10 is something that I feel like people did tell me, but I'm gonna just dial this home for you guys and tell you as a friend, the reality of the situation is these babies, they grow so fast. I know it is so tempting to get all the newborn pieces because they're so cute and you wanna put them in them right away. So get yourself a couple of new pieces that you love, but just know you don't need to buy packs of stuff because it's just too much. Take the hand-me-downs. I pull for hand-me-downs more than I pull for the new items that I bought because hand-me-downs are tried and true. Like they've been used because they work, because they're convenient, because the buttons are great, because the clips are great, because they're just good. They're just convenient. And that's why they've been used and used. So if you're getting hand-me-downs for your newborn, take them, you will use them, they are great. This little one has just put her hand in her mouth and she is waking up, so she is telling me, mom, it is time for me to have some milk. So I'm going to go nurse her. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful for you guys. I think it's really important for me to say, I'm not an expert, I'm not a nurse, you all know that but I feel like it's just really nice to look at maybe me as a older sister or just a good friend that's just gone through the newborn phase. And I don't wanna sound kind of cheesy or cliche when I say that, but I feel like some of these things, if I would have known beforehand, uh, it would have just kind of eased a little bit of the anxiety that would come about when these things would show up. So. Also, if you have not already, please take a moment to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss any new videos that I post. I will be posting a lot more new mom content as this is the chapter that I'm in. And also, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you very soon in a new video. Bye!